Phoenix Rising by Michael Anastas. Outside, Jesse had arrived at the gates of the McElwain building, accompanied by a host of Giovanni's men, 500 to be exact, all armed with heavy firearms. Officer Jenny approached the leader, armed with only a nightstick. This is neutral territory, she shouted. Even Pokemon battles are done outside of town. Quiet! Jesse swung her gun at Jenny, hitting her square in the face and knocking her to the ground. She stepped over the fallen officer, produced a megaphone, and called out to the building. Merlin Durai, we know you're in there. Surrender, and your end shall be quicker. That little bitch, Merlin uttered under his breath. He drew his sword. I'll show her whose end is coming. You're going to fight in Paradise City? questioned Ash. Do we have another choice? asked Darius. They'll kill us if we come quietly anyway. That's what Giovanni wants them to do. Serge came up behind us. I have just what you need. As we suited up, I asked, How long do you think they'll give us? Jessie's impatient, said Ash. But she'll wait until she's certain Giovanni has given the order. At those words, he produced a little gizmo from one of Serge's boxes. This will give us all the time we need. He pressed a little button on the device. The top began to rotate, and the light started flickering. Outside, the police were just getting word of a fallen officer, but it was then that the radio went dead. Boss, said Giovanni into her cell phone. What's your order? Give them minutes to... What? I said... The batteries went dead, and then she noticed the lights flickering through the city. He said minutes, plural, she muttered to herself. Probably five, if anything. Yeah, that's normally the magic number. Up above, on the 30th floor, Ash and I had finished suiting up. I never thought I'd use one of these, said Ash. You'll get used to it, said Merlin as he drew his sword. No offense, but I think I'll have a better chance relying on this. I've seen what it can do, said Serge. Besides, you've been through more battles than I have. He tossed a fairly large gun in Merlin's direction. But take this, just in case. If you insist. Ash, where are the others? Brock stumbled through the door. Right behind you! He fell down on his knees and caught his breath. Sorry, I got caught on my way in. Misty's waiting outside the gates. They sent you as a messenger? Yeah, Jessie's giving you five minutes to come out. Then she's coming in with guns blazing. She'll kill us all whether we do or not, said Ash as he threw Brock a gun. Don't waste time. Suit up! Brock looked down at his gun. Ash... I know you've already died twice, but that doesn't mean you'll get a fourth chance at life after this. If we sit here and twiddle our thumbs, then we're dead anyway! The police had taken the radio disturbance as a signal that something was wrong, and were waiting a block down the street for the signal to go. Just give the signal, said the captain, and we'll have them pinned! Two minutes, shouted Darius as he strapped on a second vest. Keep up the pace! Brock took a quick glance out the window. Shit! They've brought tanks with them! It makes no difference, said Merlin. I'll take care of them. I'm not worried about you, shouted Brock. I know you'll be fine. I'm worried about Paradise City in general. One misfire, and the entire city could go up in flames. If they come in here, they'll destroy the McElwain building. That will level the entire city in one shot. Brock put on what he thought looked calm enough. So this is what it comes down to. We haven't even fought our first battle with the Wraiths, and we're already about to risk our lives. One minute, counting down! Outside, Jessie had lost her patience. I've had it! She pulled a grenade from her pocket. Fourteenth floor! Let your journey end here! She hurled the grenade through the open window, exactly onto the fourteenth floor. Five, four, three, two... All across the city, buildings shook. Windows broke, and car alarms sounded, but everyone's eyes were focused on the man who flew out the window, waving the samurai sword through the air. FEEL MY BLADE! Merlin pointed the blade forward, and the force of the lightning which emitted from it was enough to send him back onto the 15th floor balcony. The tanks were struck dead center, blown out of the way, or decimated in its wake, and when the smoke cleared, a crater remained in the street, nearly 50 feet deep. That was our cue. Ash led the way. He clicked an ammo case into his rifle and aimed forward. 
At that very moment, the streets of the once calm and placid Paradise City became a fierce battleground. The rocket soldiers scattered, and the slowest of them fell to the ground. Ash and I came up beside the fallen Jenny and unloaded at the first soldiers to stand up from behind the wreckage of their tanks. The majority of them fell to the ground. At the same time, Surge gently lifted up Jenny in his arms and brought her to safety. We took a lot of them, but our ammo soon ran out. They're out of ammo! screamed Jessie as she pulled out her gun. And out of luck! Take no prisoners! Soldiers on all sides came rushing out and surrounded us. Brock and Darius soon found themselves in a similar situation. We're not done yet! shouted Merlin from the sky. Your friends are always there for you! Jesse stared up in awe. What? While they were distracted, we pulled out our Pokeballs and threw them before us. Before me stood Scyther, Gengar, Dragonite, and Faith. She was the only Pokemon I'd ever seen who had chosen to use firearms instead of her natural weapons. Friends, we said at once, we are in need of aid. Cut the formalities, shouted Faith. Bomb the creek! She aimed her gun at the closest soldier and dropped him. Dragonite swung his tail in a circle, and we were cleared of our problems. At the same time, Brock released his onyx. The soldiers surrounding them were cleared in a similar manner. Three of them scrambled to their feet with guns ready, and Onyx managed to grab one of them in his mouth. The other two backed off as the helpless soldier was carried through the air. Jesse arose from the ground and pointed a bazooka at Onyx. Don't do it! shouted Brock. You'll hit your soldier! What difference does it make? She fired her weapon, and Onyx's head was surrounded in smoke. He fell to the ground, the soldier nowhere in sight. Onyx! Brock rushed up to his Pokemon side, and soon found himself in pain. You good guys are so easy, Jesse sneered. I just killed my own man, and you don't see me crying. Merlin left off the balcony, and swung his sword at her. A weaker bolt struck the ground before her, just enough to send her off to the side, and enough to break Merlin's fall and lower him to the ground. This ends now! With those words, his sword was knocked to the ground, and a drop of blood fell to the pavement. Perfect timing, James! Jesse proclaimed. James! Merlin shouted, grasping his wrist. You motherfu- We'll have no profanity! Said James as he walked up, his shotgun in hand. Meowth came up beside him. And now, the tradition! A tank rolled up behind them, and a spotlight fell upon them. Prepare for trouble! And make it double! To protect the world from devastation! To unite all peoples within our nation! To denounce the- a huge fireball came flying towards them. Jesse and James just barely escaped with their lives. The driver of the tank, however, was not so lucky. Merlin stood before them, sword in hand, a single strip of tape over his wrist. We all know the motto, he shouted. Merlin shouldered his blade and took one look around Paradise City. All around him, the streets were filled with rubble, glass, twisted metal, and dead bodies. Look what you've done! You've destroyed an entire city! And for what? To kill us? Well, you failed miserably, but in doing so, you've managed to take a few thousand lives as well! Who knows how many civilians died in this battle? A worthy death! Meowth leapt up behind Merlin and sliced the back of his neck. Blood seeped out onto his collar. His sword fell to the ground. Our canine bounded up to him, snatching Meowth up in his mouth along the way. No! Please! Meowth shouted. I just did what I was told to do! I covered my eyes. When I opened them again, I wished I hadn't. Meowth was in our canine's mouth and was about to be crushed between his jaws. Mike! Behind you! I leapt off to the side just as the bullets hit the pavement, somersaulted to my feet, and unloaded at the soldier who had tried to kill me. He fell to the ground and stained the sidewalk. When I looked back, our canine spit out the tiara from Meowth's head. You killed Meowth! Jesse shouted. She drew her weapon. And you killed Merlin! Faith managed to set Jessie's hair ablaze, but not before she felt the bullet pass through her shoulder. She clutched her wound and fell to the ground in pain. Faith! James aimed at me and connected. I didn't wake up until after we had left town.